to stand here uh, before you today. I, I truly feel blessed, humbled, and honored. <coughs> Congratulations to all of the inductees that are here today, um, that are getting inducted today, and have been inducted. Um, I'm actually part of last year's class. I wasn't able to make it, so. Um, but I'd like to say thank you to those who forward my nomination um, and the committee will ultimately approve my induction. I wanted to say uh, thank you to all of my teammates, um, those who are here today especially, um, my family, Adelina, <laughs> um, my friends and fellow employees who believed in me, um, and of course uh, also my opponents and rivals who uh, also provided a lot of encouragement over the years. Um, thank you, Mikey. Thank you, Coach Cox. Um, we built a relationship rooted in trust and respect. Um, Mikey came even more of a distance coach, and I think I was probably one of his first friends. Um, so, uh, year after year, we learned just a little bit more on, on, uh, about each other. And um, how to push me down a little bit further so that I can outperform in the coming season. Lastly, um, thank you to those who have joined me today, who are sitting at my tables. Um, I know the weather didn't do us any favors, so I truly appreciate you being here. Um, each of you are great to your own right. Um, kind of today, kind of right, reminds me of a lately field track. Meet. Except I don't have to go run in the sleep. So, <laughs> um, so hearing everybody speak today kind of reminded me um, a little bit of origin story. And uh, I, I see the other Coach Cox and his wife are, are also in the stands. And I, I wanted to say thank you to them. When I came to Concord, I came. It was kind of sight unseen, like buying a car. I came from Germany. My father was uh, in the US military, he was in the Air Force, and I never visited any schools before committing to going to one. I didn't come to run track. Um, I came here because it was uh, most affordable for me, even as an out-of-state student. And so, when my mother and I came here, um, I had to make the decision to stay or go or, or leave. And, uh, it was Mrs. Cox, who was one of the first people I met here on campus. I was looking for a scholarship. Uh, and I was able to get an academic scholarship, but there was nothing else for me. So I didn't know anybody. Um, and it was just like, I had to make that decision. So I just stayed and uh, made the best of it. Or said, what comes, comes. Um, so thank you. <laughs> Um, a lot of good things happened after that. I ended up staying five years, not four. And um, I met a lot of really good people, um, friends, brothers, family. Um, so I just wanted to like, give a little bit of context. And it reminds me of one more thing. I, I uh, because my family lived in, in Europe, it was, it was not easy to go home for spring break or to you know, go home for uh, uh, whenever we had extended breaks on the weekend. So Vince uh, was sitting with us today. He was like, my, he became my, my brother. And I've always went to growing up. So growing up was my second home. Um, so I promised I wasn't going to make this long, but I still have a little bit to go. So sorry, guys. Um, but in terms of me running track, I'll just, I'll never forget that day. Um, a few of my soon to be fraternity brothers uh, convinced me into coming to a practice to do a few laps. Um, I was I was yearning to do something. I, I in high school I played. I was a three sport athlete. Um, I I wrestled. I played soccer. Uh, I did not run track. I played a little bit of football. Um, but I came here under under the suspicion that if I was going to do anything, I would have to be a walk on. 
and my soccer coach in high school always said that if I couldn't run, or he said it's all around me, but if you couldn't run the sub six minute mile, you would never play uh, college athletics. So, and I was never able to run the sub six minute mile, uh, even when I was here. <laughs> um, so I'll never forget that day. I, I, I was kind of conned into going to like uh, 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 to go run a couple of laps around the track by a few of the guys who lived uh, on my dorm on my dorm floor. And so it was supposedly very casual. I was just trying to make a good impression, uh, still pledging for my fraternity as I buy. Um, and I was bored, you know, former high school athlete, just yearning to compete. Soccer at Concord didn't work. I, I didn't see Coach Barrett today, so I was say sorry. Uh, <laughs> so I thought I'd, I'd run a few laps and just participate in something that I uh, traditionally always held at arms like uh, soccer. In high school, our soccer and track seasons coincided, and we were, I, I was made fun of the track team, so here I, here I am. <laughs> um, so after running the quarter mile, um, on that day, uh, it was demanded that I come back. Uh, this was prior to Coach Cox coming and, and, and coaching here. Uh, so I guess you could say I was kind of fast that day, but just being there and seeing a little bit more of what track and field was about really hooked me. Um, running, a, running a lap around the track as fast as you can. Um, well, it's, I'll tell you a little bit. So you see the, the quarter mile or 400 meter dash is a race where you have to, you have to look fast to run fast. Um, it happens in four 100 meter phases and you push, you pace, you place, and then ultimately you pray. Um, the gun sounds and you make the initial push. It's the first turn and you run this nearly as fast as you can. Uh, you barely take a breath. Uh, but you chop those knees and you pump those arms all the way through that first turn. <clears throat> Out of the turn, it's time to pace. Your breathing shifts, you relax, but you still hold your speed and glide down the back straight towards the beginning of the last turn. It's here into this turn where you place. It's where you hear your teammates yelling for you, uh, a woo <laughs> here, and a woo uh, there. Uh, I bet uh, I bet you won't over there. Uh, it's where you start to hear the roar, and in here, um, you'll you might hear it today. But it's where you start to hear the roar of people stomping in the stands because they're hollow. This is where you need to kick. And you need to kick early enough to place, but you have to think it through. And it's, your body just, you can't think, but you have to. Uh, so you have to think it through, and you have to time it well enough so that you don't lose your legs in that final phase, which is the finish. So the final phase, straight into the finish, is where you pray. You, you pray however you want, to whomever you want. You pray you didn't kick too early, and you pray you can dig deep enough to fend off the lactic acid that's built up and is coursing throughout your entire body. You have to fight it to the end or else. This is the quarter mile. Your mind, your body, your spirit, tested in a a grueling single lap around the track in under 50 seconds. Perhaps it's a microcosm of life as we know it. As I've reflected on my time at Concord um, and periods of my life, little did I know that there are parts of here that I've always continued to carry with me throughout my entire life. I look around me and I'm eternally grateful um, for the brotherhood and for the friendships uh, that started here uh, and endure today. It's been 20 plus years 
since I set foot here on, on Concord's campus. And my brothers, my family, my friends from here, we still pick up where we left off. Um, but these are the connections that I cherish. And regardless of where I am in the world, I, right now I live in Seattle, uh, which is kind of far away. <laughs> so little did I know that running one lap as fast as I possibly could one day um, would contribute to my eventual legacy here at Concord and have me standing here before you um, as a Hall of Fame inductee. I would have never thought something like this would um, the quarter mile became a passion for me, a saga with uh, ups and downs, an extra year at Concord, thanks to a, an injury. Um, it turned me into something like a mad scientist, an, an engineer of sorts. Um, always digging deep uh, to fully understand and relentlessly figure out how to do it, how to run that one lap faster and how to do everything else better as well. Little did I know that the consequence of that one faded casual day on the track would inspire me, would inspire it and drive me to become a leader who pushed for love of the sport through enjoyment and inclusion, a mentor or a mentee uh, to some, an inspiration or a role model to others, Someone who's started new team traditions and made amazing memories contributing to a team culture that was akin to being a family. Um, and lastly, little did I know that my actions on and off the track would galvanize so many around me to do their best and aspire to their own greatness. I stand there before you truly humbled by the fact that at some point in your lives, <laughs> Each of you will have a similar, if not more profound, impact on those around you. And each of you will push, pace, place, and pray as you run your own quarter mile. Thank you. <laughs>